Hello, my name is Jean-Paul Bandel. I practice martial arts on self-defense for over 50 years. I studied Kyushu Jitsu in USA and imported it in France 15 years ago. This DVD will show some Kyushu Jitsu techniques applied to self-defense. Kyushu Jitsu in self-defense is interesting as you won't need any strength and allows to control anybody without any serious injuries. We won't strike genitals or eyes. All techniques in this DVD are non-lethal. These techniques are for beginners and not for special forces or police. They can be practiced by old people or disabled persons. In every case, this is for everyone. In this DVD, you will learn how to manage Kyushu Jitsu to be able to run away from your opponent. But don't try to push away your opponent as he will come right back at you. So you need to neutralize him to be able to run away. To do so, you can throw him down, perform any arm lock, or cause a KO. Let's discover how to do this without any strength. We will work on acupuncture Chinese medicine pressure points with bare hands and usual objects. Everybody has a phone, case, or even an umbrella. These usual objects can be used in self-defense as any weapon. During training we use Ubibo on tombo sticks. I will explain now how to use these weapons to strike the pressure points. Before to start, let me tell you some safety instructions to avoid any attack. There are circumstances where mugging might happen. There is places you need to avoid, time you need to avoid, and circumstances you need to avoid. Don't go in a city part of town. Don't go out at night. Don't cross any park in the dark when you go home. You have to know many attacks happen in parking when you leave your car. Avoid to show your money when you leave the ATM. Many people are mugged when they leave the bank or ATM. And don't wear any jewels who might attract thieves. I worked for over 50 years in legal police of Paris. So believe me, I know about attacks and making. In this DVD, you will see some defenses made in a dojo and also in real situations. The Yubibo short stick can be used without any knowledge of Kyushu Jitsu. If I strike hard my partner, he will get hurt. But it's more interesting if you know Kyushu Jitsu. You can aim for pressure points to strike, rub or pressure to get specific reaction. So a good knowledge of Kyushu will be great advantage in the use of Yubibo. Let's locate important points that we will use bare hands, then with Yubibo and Tanbo. The more interesting points are on the arm, because in the street, 
the arms come first. Let's start with lung 5, under the elbow. Lung 6 is in the middle of the arm. Here is lung 8 and lung 9. It's a yin meridian. And we have herb 2 on the inside, just above the elbow. I can use these points with the Ubibo on pressure on lung 5 and lung 6. Lung 8 in pressure or friction. Lung 9 in pressure and her too, with a pinch. Let's use triple warmer young meridian on the outside of the arm. Here is the triple warmer 3 that you can use in pressure. Triple warmer 11 in friction above the elbow. And triple warmer 12 in the middle of the arm used with a strike. I will use now the Ubibo to pressure triple one of three. Very painful. Friction over triple one of eleven. The Ubibo is in my palm and strike on triple one of twelve. Let's use now the large intestine young meridian, starting with a pressure on the point number 4, between the thumb and index fingers. Point number 10, between the muscles, I can use a pressure or a strike. With the Ubibo, pressure on point number 4. This point acts on the diaphragm. It can be used to reanimate someone and also to cause colic. Large intestine 10 is between the muscles. You can strike with a Ubibo this way or this way. Let's see now points of the nuque and head. Here is, on the center line, named Conception Vessel Meridian, the point 22. I push downwards in the hole. Point number 24 is under the chin. I can pressure or strike downwards. Conception 22, I will raise the chin up with the Ubibo and push downwards on point 22. I will perform an horizontal strike on Conception 24.
We saw Conception Vessel Meridian. Let's see now the governing Vessel Meridian. Under the nose, I will pressure or strike. This meridian goes over the head. Here, I will make a friction or strike. Let's see now the stomach young meridian. Here is point number three, just below the eye. I can pressure it or strike it. On the same line as the hey bro, his stomach five. I can strike it with open hand or with my fist. Here is stomach 9 on carotid and stomach 10, 2 cm below. Under the carotid is pneumogastric nerve. I can make a KO if I strike here. Stomach 3 is very painful with the ubibo. Then, in this line is stomach 5, which can cause a KO if I strike it. I can also use a friction. On carotid, I can pressure or strike stomach 9 or stomach 10. Let's see Triple Warmer Young Meridian, which is a fire element. Here is the point 17, below the ear, used with a pressure or a strike. Here is the Triple Warmer 17, below the ear, used with a pressure upwards with the Ubibo. Let's see the spleen meridian on the inside of the leg. Spleen 6 is four fingers above malleolus. I can pressure it, friction it or strike it. Spleen 9 below the knee is used with a strike. Spleen 11 is on the middle of the thigh and can be used with a knee strike. Let's see the spleen meridian on the inside of the leg with the ubibo. Here is spleen 6, four fingers above malleolus. I can pressure it, friction it or strike it. Spleen 9, below the knee, is used with a strike. Spleen 11 is on the middle of the thigh and can be used with a strike. Of course, I will attack these points with a leg seizure during a kick or during a ground fight, for example in MMA. Still on the inside of the leg, let's see liver number 9, a bit more on the inside. I will strike it with a low kick on my Gary. The liver meridian is yin. He comes on the middle of the leg and here is liver 9 that I will pressure or strike.
On the outside is the gallbladder young meridian. The point 31 is very interesting for low kicks. It's in the lengthwise and crosswise middle of the thigh. I will strike it with the fist on the leg. One more time with the ubibo. In the middle of the thigh is gallbladder 31, used with a strike. And the same meridian, here, on the foot between the last two toes, is the point gallbladder 42. I will strike it or pressure with a twist. It's very painful. I can break metatarsals if I strike it with my foot. Same thing with the ubibo. I will strike gallbladder 42, which is one centimeter above the last two toes. It's really painful. Let's see now the blader young meridian. In the popliteal is the point blader 40 that I can use to bend the leg of my opponent. Same with the ubibo with pressure. On the same meridian, 4 cm below the popliteal is the point bladder 56, used with a pressure or a strike. One more time with the ubibo. I will pressure or strike bladder 56 in the upper part of the calf. Let's see the points of the body. On Conception Vessel Meridian is the point number 14. It's located at the end of sternum and I will use a pressure or strike upwards. It's the arm point of the heart. Same thing with the ubibo. I will strike Conception 14 with a pressure upwards. Still on Conception Vessel Meridian, we saw 14, now let's see 19, in the middle of sternum, used with a strike. One more time, with the ubibo, I will pressure or attack downwards, Conception 19. Let's see lung meridian. Below the clavicle, under the first rib, is a long one, which is the arm point of the lung. I will pressure or strike it at 45 degrees downwards. Same thing with the ubibo, on long one pressure point. I will pressure or strike it at 45 degrees downwards. We saw earlier stomach 9 and 10. Let's see now the point 12, behind the clavicle. I will make a pressure downwards. 
stomach 9, stomach 10, stomach 11, and I go behind the clavicle to pressure stomach 12. Very painful. Stomach 17 is located on the nipple. It's used with a pressure, pinch or even a bite. I was on stomach 12. No 17 is on the nipple. I will strike or pinch. Spleen 21 is located in the middle between the last floating rib and the axilla. I will strike it. You must raise the arm to perform the strike, so the ribs are opened, and you can strike between the ribs. Same thing with the ubibo. I will strike or pressure spleen 21. Gallbladder 25 is located on the very end of the last floating rib and slightly behind the center line. It's the arm point of the kidney and will be used with a strike or pressure. Same thing with the ubibo. I will pressure or strike with the weapon on gallbladder 25. The bladder meridian is actually divided in two lines on the back. I will use bladder 50 with a pressure to bend the opponent in order, for example, to push him down. I will use the ubibo to locate and strike or pressure the point blade of 50 to bend the opponent so I can throw him to the ground very easily. We saw how to use the ubibo on pressure points. You will learn now how to use tambo, which is longer. Pressure points are basically the same, but the use will be different. On long 5, I can use the edge of the tambo, but it's even more effective if I use the tambo to make a friction and pull the arm towards me. The opponent is neutralized. For the next points, lung 6 and lung 8, I will also use the tambo to create a friction. As the tambo is oval, frictions will be very painful. Over lung 6, I can pressure the bone to make it more painful. And a grip, I will make a pressure or friction on lung 8. Very painful. I will strike on hot 2. It's painful with the edge of the tambo. But I can also use it to get the point from the opposite side to perform a lock. I will use the end of the tambo to pressure triple 1 or 3. I will make a friction on triple one eleven. I will strike triple one twelve with the tambo. Let's work now on a push. 
pressure on large intestine 10 with the tumble. I can also use the end of the tumble to pressure large intestine 10. Here, I will make a pressure on large intestine 4, located here between thumb and index. To attack conception 22, I will strike the shin to open the defense. Then I will pressure the point with the end of the tempo. Now let's see conception 24 on the chin. I grab the tempo with my hands and make a friction or strike. Now we can attack the governor vessel meridian. Governor 26 under the nose will be used with a friction. I can make a friction or strike on Governor 16, located at the basis of the skull. A strike here is very dangerous. He might end in a wheelchair. Stomach 3. I use the end of the tempo to make a pressure upwards. Stomach 5. I strike with the end of the tempo. I can use also the opposite side or the edge to pressure the point. I can use the foot of the tombo to strike stomach 9 on 10. But I rather use them during a choke with the tombo. Here I will make a nerve or blood strangulation using points to Mach 9 or 10. If I make a low pressure it will be a blood strangulation. But if I pressure hard I will make a KO. I will use the head of the tombo on triple one or 17 below the here. I will pressure with the edge and create a lot of pain. I will use the tombo to make a friction on spleen 6. I can make a pressure or strike with the tombo on spleen 9. The tombo can be used to strike with the head, the foot, on the edge, on spleen 11. I can strike it this way, this way, or even using both my hands. Lever number 9, on the middle of the thigh, can also be used with the strike made with the head, the foot, and the edge of the tambo. Same action against gallbladder 31 using the foot, body, and head of the tambo. I can use the spike of Tombo to make a pressure on gallbladder 42. I can also use the foot of Tombo, but it will be more complicated. The spike is very painful. Bladder 40 in popliteal will be strike with the edge of Tombo. I can also make a pressure or a strike with the head or foot of the tambo. Bladder 56 on the upper part of the calf will be used with a pressure or strike made with the body, the head or the foot of the tambo.
45 degrees upwards strike or pressure on Conception 14. Avec la pointe du tombeau. Conception 19. On the middle of sternum, I will strike with the foot of the tombeau on Conception 19. Forty-five degrees downwards strike or pressure on long one. Pressure with the foot of the tombeau on stomach twelve. Behind clavicle. The strike on stomach 17 will actually be like a whiplash. I will not do it because it's really painful. Splint 29 can be attacked with the head, the foot and the edge of the tambo using my two ends. I can make a pressure on Goldbrother 25 with the head or the body of the tambo. I can make a pressure on Blade of 50 with the head or the foot of the tambo. I can also use a Gyakuti grip on the tambo to strike this point. Ninety percent of the attacks are made with open hands. It's very rare that someone attacks you with a punch or a weapon. Most of time it's a threat to rob you or some drunken brawl. All attacks are made with arms forwards and open hands. So the first things I will grab are fingers. I can break fingers very easily, as they are very fragile. The pain caused by finger locks blocks 80% of the brain, so it's impossible to attack when you suffer from a finger lock. You will learn how to do it in this DVD without any effort. Most of time in the street, the opponent wants to grab me, to rob me for example. Do not push back your opponent. He will try to attack you one more time. If I want to neutralize him and run away, I need to let him come close to me, so I can perform any technique to put him down. As I told you in the street, attacks are made with open hands. First things forwards are the fingers, so I won't push him away. I let him come very close and grab his fingers. I will size two fingers to not injure my partner. And I will stretch the fingers. This is the very basis. He pushes me, I dodge, my pinky finger will make the leverage and my thumb will push back. I put his palm against my chest to be more powerful. It's now very easy to break the fingers. This is basic self-defense. You can perform your finger lock in many directions, on the sides or even upwards. In every case, I will move his palm in the direction of the lock. If I stretch downwards, the palm will be down. On the outside, 
on the inside or upwards. In this direction, I will use his own weight to perform the lock. I can reinforce the action if my opponent is very strong. First possibility is to change the angle of the lock. His brain might be able to resist over one direction, but not two. I can start downwards and turn to his left. This allows me to follow with another technique. Second possibility is to create vibrations. It's very efficient and painful. Third possibility is to stand in Niko Ashidachi. This karate stance allows me to send energy downwards. He will not be able to resist anymore. These are some possibilities to reinforce the action of the lock. To make a proper lock, I need to create a base, like a ground to push his palm. I can do it with my own hand my chest, my arm, or even a wall or my leg. That will improve the efficiency of the lock, even if it's very flexible. Next thing to know is to make the lock in the direction of my center line, on his center line. I will push his finger towards him. If I do it next to him, it won't be efficient. Here I am more efficient. For people who know Kyushu Jitsu, there are some traditional Chinese medicine principles, such as yin and yang, five elements, the cycle of creation, the cycle of destruction, quadrants system, and Kiai Jitsu with sounds and stances. We made many DVDs about these subjects. We saw that finger locks can be made like this on these fingers. I can also do it on the two other fingers. I can also do it on the thumb. These are stretch finger lock. I can also perform locks by compression or twist. As I would do it on a wrist or elbow. I can also pinch the nail. I put my nail over his, and it's very painful. Chinese people used to torture prisoners with small sticks under their nails. There is also locks on wrists, inflection, extension, outside twist, inside twist. To be more efficient, I will add two principles. He might resist if I perform the lock in one direction. But if I add a twist, he can't resist anymore. 
So don't hesitate to perform a flexion under twist or extension under twist. In self-defense, beginners will practice these common finger locks. Of course, you can make arm locks as it happens in Judo or Aikido. Locks on shoulders, knee, hips, etc. In self-defense, as the hand comes first, it's easier to grab the hand and the fingers. It requires no effort. For example, if I cross the pinky finger over the ring finger, it's very painful. We saw many finger locks suitable for self-defense. Let's see another kind of techniques, the torsion head. This will allow us to put the opponent down or even to break his neck. Let's see some of these techniques, very easy to perform. Most of people are very strong from the neck, so it's hard to make a torsion. So you will have to use some Kyushojitsu points. Let's start with something easy, a friction or gallbladder pressure points located above the ear. Make a friction like this, you will be able to bend the head very easily. Second possibility is to use the same points with your other hand. If I pull his hair with my right hand, he can resist. But if I pull the hair with my left hand and twist the head, I might be able to break the cervical vertebrae. I can improve the action by pulling the hair and pushing on stomach 5 pressure point. Another possibility is to grab the hair. If I twist the ear, I can make an easy torsion on his head. I can follow with a strike or projection. With this, you can start to understand how to defend yourself. Wrist and finger locks are made on extended arms. The neck techniques are made on a very close range, for example, if he grabs me. Here I can use frictions to throw him down and run away. He grabs me, I make a friction above the ear and pivoted to put him down. And run away.
Same action, but this time I will grab his hair with my opposite hand. I twist the head during a rotation, using my other hand to be more efficient. I grab the hair and turn it. I twist the head and the body and throw him on the ground. I can control him. And these techniques, the partner won't resist if he doesn't want me to break his neck. In the street, someone approaches and put his hand on a lady. This is not dangerous, but quite unpleasant. And he might follow with some techniques. So the lady will grab and twist the fingers of her opponent and put him on the ground. As attack and defense are proportional, there is legitimate defense. Finger locks are very useful as it's not dangerous, but very painful. So she can bring him down easily with an accurate legitimate defense. The opponent grabs the wrist. If the lady pushes him away, he will come back harder. He won't be neutralized. So, on this grip, the lady will perform a lock to break the wrist and put him down. She can throw him away very easily. The opponent will size a lady from behind. Most of time, a man is stronger, so the lady won't be able to use strength. She will strike the toes with her heel, move under his arm using her hips, and will squeeze the hand and fingers. And now, she can pull him on the ground very easily, by pushing on the hurt to pressure point. Now the opponent is on the ground with a broken wrist. She can run away or strike him. The opponent will size the waist. She will strike him with her elbow. Women are stronger with elbow than fists. She will control his arm by pressuring his elbow on triple warmer points and bring him down. Now she can break the arm 
run away or strike him. Here is a dangerous attack. He grabs her hair in order to kiss her. She will strike him with her elbow, as women are strong with elbows. Strike under the nose, turn his head to bring him down, to strangle him. As the attack was violent, this kind of defense is acceptable. She can now run away. Nowadays, there's a lot of muggings to steal mobile phones. People who are on the phone get mugged by people running or on motorcycles. When you suspect a situation, do not freeze on your phone. Look around, hang up and run away. You can also use the phone as a weapon to strike or make frictions or locks just like it's a Yubibo. Let me show you examples. I will use my phone as a Yubibo or Tanbo. Friction on lung 8 with the mobile phone. Pressure on lung 9. Strike on lung 5. Strike on lung 1. I can make all Kyusho Jitsu strikes with my phone. I can also use it to make locks. Finger locks. Pinch on the ear. Pinch on the nose. I have plenty of possibilities using my mobile phone. Let's see some applications with David and Blandin. Classical mugging. She's on the phone and he will try to steal it. She disengages with a lock on the wrist, uses her phone on the elbow and will strike the neck. The opponent will be KO but not dead. Same attack to steal a mobile phone as she's texting. She traps his fingers and makes a finger lock to bring him down. 
She will use her phone to strike stomach 5 point, located on the jaw. He might be KO at this point. But she will follow with a strike on Gallbladder 31 to paralyze his leg, so she can run away. Same kind of attack, to steal her mobile phone. Blandine disengages by performing a lock on the thumb. She uses the phone to strike and run away. Blondine walk in the street without checking around. Someone comes from behind to steal her phone. She will react fast and control his wrist to make a lock using her phone's hedge between metacarpus. She controls him on the ground and strikes the floating ribs. Then she runs away. Blandine walks in the street with her mobile phone, which is very dangerous. Someone cross her way and tries to grab her phone and run away. She uses the imbalance to strike on the neck to throw him on the ground. This is a daily situation. She is in restrooms, changing rooms of some nightclubs. Someone comes from behind. As she sees him in the mirror, she strikes fast on the plexus. Then on stomach 12 point, located above clavicle. She throws him down and finishes him with a strike. We use here the brush as a yubibo, this small Japanese stick you saw earlier in this DVD. So usual objects can be used as weapons.
Blondine is in a cinema restroom as a man comes from behind. She sees him in the mirror and starts to defend herself with her brush on triple one of four located on the hand. Then she strikes the neck and gives a knee strike to push him back. When you see the opponent coming, try to not be afraid or freeze. Blondine was right to turn around to face her opponent. You need to anticipate the attack to be able to defend yourself. We are in a train or a cinema with two seats next to each other. A man will put his hand on a lady. As he will touch Blondine, she will use her brush to strike the hand and follow with a finger lock in order to put him down. She can finish him with a final kick to push him away. Same situation where a man will put his hand on a woman's leg. Blondine will strike the hand with her brush, then strike stomach three, crush his toes and push him away. She did use her brush, but it could also be a mobile phone, an umbrella, or even an ashtray if they were in a coffee place. Blondine sits in the train, restyling her hairs. When a man starts to bother her, she will use her brush to make a pressure on the neck to twist his head and pull him down. As the attack wasn't violent, Blondine's defense was soft. In other circumstances, she would get up to strike him again or to face other opponents.
Blandine sits in a coffee place and brushes her hair. When a man comes from behind and starts to bother her, she grabs his wrist and strikes with her elbow. Then she grabs his arm and throws him down. As he already was unbalanced, she didn't use any strength to throw him. No, she can run away. Let's work now with an umbrella used as its tambour weapon. We will perform here a cycle of destruction. You have learned about the five elements in a previous DVD. There is wood, fire, earth, metal and water. He will grab her collar. Blandin will strike lung 5, which is metal. Then, strike Goldbladder 20 as the opponent's head has turned. Goldbladder 20 is a wood element. Then she will strike Stomach 10 on the throat, which is an earth element. We have here a cycle of destruction as the metal destroys the wood and the wood destroys the earth. This part of the umbrella is very strong, so the strikes performed in this DVD are not violent. Of course, in real fight, the strikes will be harder to cause KO every time. Patrick will try to choke Blondy. She will strike on large intestine 10, then make a strangulation by putting the umbrella behind the neck. This will be a blood strangulation with pressure on pneumogastric nerve, which will provoke a KO, so she can throw him away to finish him. Patrick will mug Blandin by grabbing her hair. She will strike on the inside of the thigh, on the stomach, on the coasts, and perform an arm lock with a friction on triple one eleven to relax the arm muscles. She can run away. All techniques were done with the umbrella.
Blandine just gets some money at the ATM when a man attacks her with a knife to steal her money. She will use the umbrella to remove the knife, strike the plexus and hit Goldbrother 20 on the neck to cause a KO. Keys can be used as a weapon, especially if there are many keys and a chain to hold them. I can use a key to strike, many keys to strike, very dangerous as it will enter inside the skin. I can use a chain to unbalance the opponent. I can use the object as a nunchaku. There's plenty of possibilities. Blondine will enter her home when a man attacks her. She will use the key to make a pressure on points long 8 and 9 located on the wrist and bring him down. It's much more painful with a key than bare hands. Blandine will enter her home when a man attacks her from behind. She will control the opponent's arm and crush his toes. She will strike on Goldbrother 31 in the middle of the thigh, which is very painful. Move under the arm and strike the bladder meridian and run away. She used only her keys. Let's see now a technique with the chain of the K-ring. You might also use another object such as a belt, a leash or a tie. Patrick attacks Blandine who controls his wrist with the chain. She follows with an arm lock and an elbow strike. She can control him on the ground with a case.
Oh. 